Wow, thank you. Thank you. We have the opportunity to uh, raise a little money for charity. We've done 500 of these events all over the country. Um, I will point out, if you haven't seen it, uh, to take a look at my uh, motion picture that was released last year. It's called The Christmas Cottage. It was made by uh, uh, Lionsgate Pictures this year, and it's a, a movie about my life. And uh, what's that? Where do we get it? Oh, you can get it at uh, pretty much anywhere uh, Amazon. Uh, Netflix, all those, it's, a, it's available for rental or for purchase. It's called The Christmas Cottage, and it features Peter O'Toole, uh, plays the old artist who was the hero of my life as a young kid. He was the artist who uh, really influenced me, and uh, I encourage you to get a copy of that movie and take a look at it. But in that movie, we talked about the uh, uh, kind of inspiration that came on me as a young kid, and there's a portrayal of my mother and a portrayal of this old artist, Glenn Wessels was his name. He was almost 80 years old and I was a young kid. And uh, he embraced me, became my mentor, my friend, um, my uh, encourager, my teacher. The movie tells the story of that. And as part of the movie, you see this element where he kept saying, you know, you've got a talent, you've got to use this to make the world a better place. My mother used to say, Tom, you know, God gives you a talent, and that is his gift to you. But how you use that talent is your gift to God. And she said, you must use what God has given you, your resources, to bless others. And that's the true riches in life, is when you bless and give with whatever talent, ability, resource, position, influence, intelligence, energy that you have. And that became, for me, a motivating mantra of my entire life, a statement of vision that I uh, clung to. When I uh, became an artist, became well-known, I was trying to find ways that we could use our events to create uh, a chance to give back. And one of the ideas that we had was we wanted to uh, create uh, live auctions and use them to connect with charity. We have done what I'm about to do hundreds of times all over the United States. And what I do, I, I do a little sketch and it becomes an original, an original Thomas Kincaid. And I will tell you as we start, I offer a 100%, 100% guarantee that what I'm about to draw is by Thomas Kincaid. Um, <laughs> Because I'm going to watch myself draw it, and, uh, and you can too. Now, when Nanette and I lived in England, we, we lived in a cottage, and uh, we got married, you know, we were both from California, we'd been around the country a little bit, but we hadn't been overseas to Europe very much. And uh, we decided we wanted to go and actually not just visit, but we wanted to live there. So we went on our third year anniversary, we took this wild driving trip, painting trip through Europe, as part of that trip, we discovered the Cotswold region of England. I fell in love. And you see people uh, who live in cottages that literally are a thousand years old or older, made of stone. We stayed in a cottage over a thousand years uh, old. Uh, you imagine that. Yeah. We lived there a thousand years. Um, artists age well, uh, actually. But we, uh, we lived in the cottage that was over a thousand years old. And when, um, when we were there, I was so drawn to it, and I've analyzed it many times. Why there? Well, it just has the perfect balance between nature and uh, human construction. You have materials that are natural, stone, thatching. Uh, all these materials are taken right off the land and are used to create uh, dwellings, structures that populate this area or that uh, uh, figure into their... Um, villages and so forth. So when you have um, that kind of natural setting, and when it's so old, it, it just does something to me. It makes me feel as though I've connected with something eternal. Well, the, the tradition of the evening walk, Nanette and I have kept going, and we, 
we do that with our kids. In fact, we even became radical when, after we moved back from England, uh, we were getting ready to start having kids, and we decided that once we brought kids into the home, we brought the television and all that kind of stuff out of the home. And we have been a media-free family for 21 years. And it's pretty amazing. And the reason we do that is not because we have a moral objection to TV, although you could make a good case that it's pretty uh, worthless, much of the stuff, I'm sure. But we uh, value reading. We value other pursuits. We value quietude. I don't like to come home and have noise. I want it quiet. Uh, you know, you don't look at my paintings and see this little cottage and you say to yourself, man, there's some loud screaming going on inside that cottage. I mean, you look at that cottage and it's peaceful. You picture a fire roaring in the fireplace. Uh, so we live a kind of a retro life. We have bicycles, uh, and that's one of our big passions is riding bikes. We do um, travel uh, by bike whenever practical to our little town. We live right on the outskirts of town, and it's a classic small town that we live in. So we have uh, a church that we attend. It's just down the road. We ride our bikes there. You know, there's a thousand people that attend our church, and a thousand people attend that church, and, we'll, and most of the people live within five miles of the church, 85, 90%. You know when we go in there to that church, park our bikes in the big bike rack? They're the only bikes there. You know, let that sink in for a minute. They are the only bikes there every Sunday. Well, why? Oh, you're just fortunate, Tom. Yeah, it really costs a lot of money to get on your bike and pedal on down to your church. Well, I'm giving you an encouragement that you might think about some of those great blessings. You know, we went up to the uh, uh, town today and we just wandered around well you get so much out of the simplest things in life you see things that you miss when you uh, just have the TV going or the Walkman plugged in we live down by the coast we have a home on the beach not too far from our main home and uh, we live there part-time and my my greatest pleasure is to sit out on the front patio and just hear that ocean of the Pacific coming in you know and I just love seeing all those people sitting out in front, out on the sandy beach, and they got that Walkman plugged in, you know, and the iPod, and they're like listening to this rock and roll music. I'm like, man, listen to the seagulls for a few minutes, you know? God's got his own music just dialed in, and we miss it. We get out of that pace. I hope that my paintings remind you of those simpler things and maybe encourage you to try uh, a simpler approach to life because simplifying... Is our, uh, is our biggest challenge in this culture. You know, when I was growing up, if I could have had the chance to have met with my artist hero, which was Norman Rockwell, and if I could have had the chance to have, you know, uh, seen him at work, and then to not only have seen him at work, but actually to watch him create a sketch right before my eyes, and then if I'd have had the chance to, uh, to come up and see that sketch in person. And then even more, if I'd have had the chance to take that sketch home with me and have that as my own and have him watch him create it right there in front of your eyes, it would have been just one of the greatest uh, blessings of my life. I never had that chance. Rockwell was a very shy individual. He never got up in front of the public very much. Uh, so that was not to be. I never had the chance to meet him. But I will tell you that there's something wonderful about connecting with an artist and making an heirloom that way. Uh, this will be an heirloom for someone. You'll pull this off your wall in 20 years. You'll be able to bring that home, pull it off the wall, show it to your grandkids. And you say, this is an original Thomas Kincaid. I watched him draw it. And they'll, the, the young child will say, no way. I thought Thomas Kincaid was a legend. You mean he's a real person? <laughs> said, I thought he was like Elvis, just a myth, you know. <laughs> By then there will be Kincaid sightings all over Arizona, you know in parking lots of 7-Elevens. You see me out there with a Slurpee. Um, anyway, I, I really think that there is something cool about an original. So what we're going to do is bring uh, Jason back out. And at this point, I'm going to let him conduct a brief auction for this. We will have a winning bid tonight, and someone will take this home. But a portion of the proceeds will also help charity, which is a good thing. We've raised millions of dollars over the years doing exactly what I just did. Now, as a further incentive to bid, I will throw in to the winning bidder the pencil I sketched it with. <laughs> so that's a 50 cent value right out of the gate. I will get a chance to meet with every person down front. So if you'll just enjoy the auction for a few minutes, I'll be right back out. God bless. <laughs>